Today we're gonna to talk about carbohydrates in detail. Do you have to cut out all carbs to lose weight? The answer is a little more, more complicated than that and we're gonna get right into it. Carbohydrates are chains of glucose and low carb diets have become very popular including diet such as the keto diet, uh, which has been very successful for people to lose weight. However, many traditional societies throughout the ages have eaten carbohydrates and there hasn't been a lot of obesity until relatively recently. So what's the difference? What's the truth? We had populations that ate a lot of rice, we had populations that ate lots of potatoes, and there was not much obesity until the 70s. But there's actually many different types of carbohydrates and not all of them are really all that fattening. So I break them down into four categories. There's refined carbohydrates, there's unrefined carbohydrates which are starchy, and there's unrefined carbohydrates that are more fibrous and then I use a separate category for fruit. And I'm gonna discuss each of these in turn. First, refined carbohydrates. So these are processed. That is, they're not found in this form in nature. The classic would be white flour, for example, or even whole wheat flour. You don't find flower trees, but you do grow wheat berries and from that wheat, you have to process that in order to get flour. So it's not really just the type of food, but what you're doing to that food that makes it more fattening than other foods. What you do when you take wheat berries and turn it into flour is that you have to extract a lot of the proteins out. You have to take out a lot of the fiber. You take out all of the fat and then you grind it into a very fine dust and that's how you get white flour. Because it's been so highly refined, the body absorbs it extremely quickly, especially grinding it into that fine dust, we get the very quick rush of glucose because carbohydrates are made of chains of glucose. Therefore, insulin ice also spikes up very quickly and it can sometimes fall just as quickly, which can lead to this crash that happens perhaps an hour, hour and a half after eating high carbohydrate containing meals. And these refined carbohydrates are the main things that people suggest that you cut out in low carbohydrate diets. Some examples of these refined carbohydrates is flour, so white flour, but also whole wheat flour. Even though it contains a little bit more fiber, it's also still ground up very fine, which leads to this very quick absorption. You see this in things like the glycemic index where whole wheat bread is almost converted to glucose as quickly as white bread. So it's maybe marginally better, but it's still not great. Other things like rice flours and corn flours are also highly processed. So all the things that are predominantly made out of these flours should be avoided if you want to avoid this very high rise in glucose, high spike in insulin, which may lead to weight gain. Some examples would be things like bread, um, pasta, cereals, breakfast cereals, beer, muffins, donuts, that kind of thing. And most people acknowledge that they're not particularly slimming foods. The other group that's particularly problematic is refined simple sugars. Sugar, like table sugar, is composed of one molecule of glucose and one molecule of fructose, as opposed to starches, which are mostly chains of glucose. And it's this fructose which is particularly problematic for weight gain. It's in the way that the fructose is metabolized, it goes straight to the liver and often becomes converted into fat, which can lead to a lot of insulin resistance, which leads to high insulin levels. The, the problem with sugar is not only that it's uh, very easy to turn into fat, but it's also very rewarding. It's very uh, easy to eat sugar. It's very easy to overeat sugar. And this is a problem when you have added sugars. So there's lots of natural foods that contain sugar, but there's usually a limit to how much sugar they contain. 
processed foods are particularly bad because they add a lot of sugar because it's a way to make food taste very good at a very, very low cost. So avoiding these sugars and other things with a lot of fructose, like uh, high fructose corn syrup, for example, is critical for weight loss. So that includes white sugar, brown sugar, uh, they think have things like fructose, high fructose corn syrup, maple syrup, uh, fruit juice concentrates, that type of thing. There's lots of different names because they often want to hide how much sugar is contained in uh, ingredient lists. You really have to go digging. Another area to look out for are refined grains. While these are not as refined as flour, which have been grind very fine, they are still refined. So things like white rice, instant rice, polished rice, instant oatmeal, because again, it's ground very fine so that it cooks very quickly. That is much more processed than steel cut oats, for example, which have to be cooked for a long time. Corn starch, potato starch, uh, modified food starch, tapioca starch. You wanna avoid all of those things. So in summary, those are flours, refined grains and starches, and simple sugars. The next group of carbohydrates are the unrefined carbohydrates, which means that these occur fairly close to what they look like in nature. But these are the unrefined carbohydrates that are starchy. Usually you'll find them in uh, roots that are growing underground because the plants are trying to store away these carbohydrates for later use. This includes grains like rye, barley, buckwheat, spelt, basmati rice, black rice, certain noodles like shirataki noodles are made of yam, and root vegetables like potatoes, sweet potatoes, parsnips, taro, uh, artichoke, for example. Those are all starchy carbohydrates, but because they're unrefined, they do contain things such as fiber, which helps slow down the digestion. So you don't get that very quick rise in glucose that you see with the refined carbohydrates. In indices such as the glycemic index, what you see is that the uh, glycemic index is much, much lower than those of refined carbohydrates. And therefore, you can take these foods in moderation. They're not necessarily bad for you. It depends on how you make them and also how much you take and how often you eat them. But they're often a much better choice than the refined carbohydrates. The third group of carbohydrates that you should be cautious of, but not necessarily completely cut out, is fruit. Fruit is very controversial because it is a natural food. However, some fruits have a lot of fructose. And chemically, there's no difference between the fructose that is contained in fruit and the fructose that you would get in high fructose corn syrup. So the difference with fruit is that it comes packaged with a lot of other things. When you eat an apple, there's a lot of fiber, there's a lot of the pulp, there's other nutrients in it, and it's often very hard due to the bulk of the fruit to overeat these fruits, as opposed to overeating things like the fruit juice, for example, where all of that has been removed. So certain fruits are going to be much better than others. Berries, strawberries, raspberries, blackberries are often going to be much better than other very sweet fruits. The other thing to keep in mind is that many of the fruits that we eat today are different than the fruits that we ate 30, 40 years ago. They're much sweeter. They've been genetically altered. They've been bred together. A lot of things like the white peaches, the golden uh, pineapples have been bred to be much sweeter than previous generations uh, would have eaten. That's why it's not so hard to get people to eat fruit these days because it really is nature's candy. So if you are gonna take fruit, while it's not the worst thing you can take, it can be one of the factors that's impeding your weight loss. That takes us to the last category of carbohydrates, which is really what should make up the bulk of the carbohydrates in your diet. And these are unrefined carbohydrates, but non-starchy and more fibrous. These are usually the vegetables that grow above ground, as opposed to the starchy ones that grow below ground. These are 
occur naturally, but because of the amount of fiber in them, they're very bulky, they tend to make you feel full, and they're very slowly absorbed, so you feel this very slow rise in blood glucose and insulin, and therefore it may make it easier to keep that weight off. Legumes and lentils are a great example of carbohydrates that really don't have much of an effect on insulin. They contain a lot of protein, so they're very good vegetable sources of protein. They sometimes can be added with natural fats, and there's a ton of fiber in these, which means that it's going to slow the rise of glucose because absorption is much slower. The other big category that you'll see here are the non-root vegetables. So things like asparagus and peppers and broccoli and cauliflower and Brussels sprouts, eggplants, leafy greens, all of those things. While they are carbohydrates, nobody really gets fat eating broccoli. It's just very difficult to do. If you're eating a lot of these above ground vegetables, it's going to provide a lot of nutrients, but it's also going to fill you up because of their bulk. And as long as you're not eating frequently, then it's going to do a good job for weight loss. The general consensus is that these vegetables are not particularly fattening. And this doesn't matter if you're listening to the low fat diet or the keto diet or the paleo diet or any standard diet. Most people acknowledge that these leafy greens and beans and so on are great parts of your weight loss diet. So carbohydrates are not one category, but really all different categories. And some carbohydrates can be part of a great weight loss strategy. Remember, refined carbohydrates, maybe you should hold off. I give it a red light. For starchy carbohydrates, the root vegetables, and also for fruit, I'd say yellow light. Be cautious of these. You might be able to tolerate it, but you might not be tolerating it. And the green light for virtually all diets are the unrefined, non-starchy carbohydrates, the things such as legumes, lentils, and leafy greens, vegetables that grow above ground. And that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. If you did, maybe share it with a friend. You might help them too. And if you could do me a favor, hit that like button and also the subscribe button so that you keep up to date on all my latest videos. I'll see you next week.